The 4th of July in D.C. as the nation's capital gets prepped for big celebrations and big crowds. It's packed. It's packed. It's just crazy. But now, new concerns over a possible terror attack. The FBI, Homeland Security, and National Counterterrorism Center all warning local law enforcement of any heightened concern involving possible terror attacks targeting the 4th of July holiday. Despite what many people might believe, terrorist attacks are not always about causing the most damage and spreading carnage over a widespread area. Many times it's about the date, the time, and the symbolism involved, leading many to up the security ante for this weekend and the American 4th of July holiday. But even in the midst of what we know and what we see around the world, some would see this as unnecessary caution, perhaps even feeding into the hysteria terrorists yearn for. One guest is with us right now, all too familiar with these various aspects of terror, former Deputy National Intelligence Officer, 23 years with the CIA, and author of The Interrogator, an education about his life as a CIA spy. We welcome Glenn Carl to Midpoint. And joined by former Pennsylvania Congressman and former Chair of the House Science, Space and Technology Committee, Robert Walker. Gentlemen, I want to thank you both for joining me today. And Glenn, I want to begin with you as somebody who has seen this happen so many times and who has been so closely involved with the nation's security. We hear from one side that there is a great concern over terror threat, yet we're told by the DHS that there was no specific terror threat linked to this warning. Do you think we should be as ready and should there be as much in the public eye right now as far as a warning as we've seen yeah i think you raised the question implies the uh the answer which is a good thing often we do play we the intelligence services and the government play into the hands of the terrorists who wish to terrorize and to, to create fear uh, most of the time uh, it's better that uh, these uh, groups and people will be handled in the silence and in the dark and the CIA, the FBI should always be vigilant. And there are dates that uh, would lend a certain uh, panache to an attack, such as the 4th of July, when the services, relevant services, should be uh, particularly attentive to uh, any possibility of a threat. But engaging the public on that, I think, probably plays a bit into the hands of the people we wish to stop. Congressman, what do you think about that? Because there is a side that says every time one of these warnings comes out, all we're doing is we are creating the terror and the fear that these enemies want. Well, in general, I agree with uh, the point that uh, it is uh, harmful at times to raise unnecessarily the um, uh, concern of the public. But in this particular case, I mean, you both have both the deputy uh, director of the CIA, the, the, the head of Homeland Security, who are out publicly saying that, uh, that this is a problem. And so uh, I think that the real concern here is that these lone wolf terrorists uh, have been active recently. Uh, and we've seen some uh, worldwide uh, situations arise that put us on particular uh, notice uh, that July 4th could be a place where we have a problem. And so uh, I think in this particular instance, the public does need to uh, have uh, some concern about um, uh, what uh, could happen in uh, prime areas. Glenn, is it fair to say that part of these warnings, when you get the DHS, the FBI, and others who come out and hand these out, and the media then spreads it everywhere, that many times it is focused and aimed at the terrorists themselves to tell the lone wolves and the people who are sitting in wait that we know you're here and we just want to let you know that we're a little more prepared? Or does that make any difference? Yeah, I don't think that is actually the case. Uh, in intelligence work, you don't want your enemy to know what you know and what you're doing. And the last thing you want to do, I think the congressman and I are, are in agreement that there are contradictorily and contradictory and equally valid objectives that the government needs to uh, to uh, achieve to stop the terrorists, not to glorify them, not to bring them to public attention, and yet to keep the public uh, apprised and, and safe. And these things often conflict. Uh, I think. Uh, you don't want to signal your concern so that the terrorists uh, think that it's more dangerous. They, they know, uh, happily for us, they know that uh, it is very difficult to be a terrorist. The, the life expectancy of a foreign fighter, uh, when we were in Iraq, a foreign fighter, you could argue, was a terrorist, depending on how you want to characterize it, uh, was about a week. Um, and uh, there have been a number of attempts to attack the United States, and happily only really one success, aside from a couple of inspired individuals uh, such as the marathon bombers in Boston and the the army captain in Texas uh, beyond that uh, the services do a good job and uh, we don't we don't want to glorify people who are horrible people uh, with views that 
are diametrically opposed to everything that we hold dear. Glenn, let me follow up just with regard to the symbolism and the date. July 4th, big day. Everybody knows it's, a, it's an American holiday. But is it really any more likely that terrorists would attack us on that day? Are they still that into the symbolism? Or would they simply just pick a day that's more important to them? Or just any day for that matter, maybe thinking that we're not that prepared? Well, sometimes the answer is yes and no simultaneously. Sometimes uh, terrorists, individuals, or groups uh, have selected uh, dates uh, with a symbolism. Uh, frequently they don't. Uh, I have always been a bit wary, and I think subsequent uh, uh, investigations of reports and threat responses by the intelligence community have borne out my wariness in playing uh, with numerology. Uh, what we need to do is always be vigilant um, and always be uh, just about ruthless with people who are trying to kill us, uh, but uh, playing as though we are um, uh, a medieval monk looking at numbers, uh, I think might make us more afraid than safe. Congressman, are you satisfied that with all these preparations, with as much as we've done, and we certainly have all the local authorities that are involved, the federal authorities involved, that we are being imaginative enough, I guess, in thinking of where these attacks will come from and maybe looking a little bit past what we might consider the norm? Well, I think there are two things here. I mean, I, I think part of the reason why we have heightened the concern here is because it is the you know, Muslim holy days and ISIS has called for attacks during this period of time and July 4th happens to fall in the midst of it. Uh, so that's, that's one thing. But, and so I think we are uh, attempting to do uh, some things uh, a little differently than we have in the past. The roundup of uh, some individuals that we already knew were on terrorist lists, I think it is in part because we are trying to be a little bit more wary uh, at this point uh, than we might otherwise. Glenn, with the CIA looking at all of these things around the world, do they have enough to get it done? There are so many people to this day, and I, a lot of former CIA officials I talk to tell me that they still feel as if their hands are tied. They don't have enough to get the job done. They're being held back. Do you agree with that? I, I don't agree with that, really. Uh, one of the problems that the United States frequently has, and this will sound counterintuitive, is having too many resources. I'm not arguing for uh, a reduction in in uh, force of personnel or, or resources at all. But uh, you want to focus on the essential, uh, not have more is not necessarily better. Better is better. And, and it's hard to decide and know what better is. But I, I can tell you that the resources that the United States government devotes to counterterrorism are astounding and very impressive. The officers are um, dedicated to the point where it, it moves me to, uh, I, I choke up, literally at the dedication of entire lives uh, of my colleagues. And um, no one is perfect. The agency certainly is not. The FBI is not. But uh, they are dedicated and quite good. I don't think it's a question of resources, no. Congressman, I only got about 30 seconds left. What do you think when you hear Glenn say something like that, where he says it chokes him up this, to hear and, and to think about what his, what his fellow officers are doing today? Well, I can't agree more. It's, it is absolutely incredible. Uh, what the, the people who are in our intelligence services, in our law enforcement services, uh, these are people who are highly dedicated uh, and who risk their lives every day on our behalf. They are, they are absolutely magnificent people. And let us hope that come this 4th of July holiday, nobody needs to have an emergency, nobody needs to go through anything dangerous, and we all have a nice peaceful weekend. It would be wonderful to see. Let's remind everybody once again, the book is The Interrogator, an education. It's written by Glenn Carl. Glenn, thank you so much for being here. Congressman, always a pleasure. Gentlemen, to both thank of you and your families, have a great Fourth of July holiday. And you too. you too. All right, take care. Coming up next, the Tuesday News Call, a disturbing popularity poll about the president and why a 15-year-old picture is creating a stir. Next on Midpoint.